This is something that uh, you know I've wanted to do. I feel like everyone wants to own one of these cars at some point in time, but they're getting so ridiculous price-wise, they just keep going up and up and up. And I figured uh, now is the time to just pull the trigger before it even gets more wild to the point where I'll never own one. So without further ado, Engine-wise, we are bone stock. Yes. Look how cool that is. First coil over. Yeah. At the end of the day, putting a lot of time and effort and money into this thing and making it a true rad car to drive is gonna be all the more worthwhile. Over a thousand horsepower, or it's not gonna be a fun car. All jokes aside, recently I've been stressing the importance of a balanced car, and so it is not going to be a thousand horsepower. And the car's still cool. It's stock, it's a little slow, but a lot of these packages I ordered a really long time ago. So these are actually the fins that will get mounted to the V-Spec diffuser. I think altogether between these packages, there's about $7,000 of dumb cosmetic stuff. Looks so much nicer than the old one, too. Three hundred and fifty horsepower. This looks so cool, doesn't it? We're gonna do a lot of really nice stuff and I wanna have my bay the same color as the car just for it to be aesthetically pleasing. Now mind you, technically this is our first RB26 disassembly. HKS came out with V-Cam. Very expensive, very baller, very cool. Never thought I would own a car with V-Cam. This uses oil pressure to vary the valve timing via a one-way switch, just like VCT. I'm not gonna go into full detail as to why. I'm not very happy with the paint job. It was not done by one of my local usual guys that I go to because there was a lot of dirt in the clear. Thankfully, Alberto reminded me that I have this piece that covers up a lot of the imperfections. Nonetheless, because I'm going above and beyond with this build in every way, shape, and form, and got a full set of the very rare gold emblems for this car. These turbos are from ATP and they've come out with them as a bolt-on solution and they claim that they'll make upwards of 900 horsepower. I'm, I'm doing this kind of for you guys, kind of for myself. You guys remember, it was kind of a sad story when I got the car back last time, the painter really butchered it. And I almost just left the bay and just like dealt with it. But uh, Kroll's Customs reached out to me from up in Pennsylvania um, and basically uh, assured me he just repainted an entire Midnight Purple 3 R34 GTR that he could get it perfect. I'm beyond happy with it now and it's where it's at for me to be excited to put the car back together. All jokes aside guys, Tommy did help me out and he was the connect for getting all my bolts zinc plated. So this is uh, the color I decided to do for the valve covers. Um, the whole idea is to kind of go with like a purple and gold theme, kind of matching the OEM gold that Brembo's would be. It's a little bit of an impulse buy from Terra Firma. Look at those. Damn.
these manifolds I did end up buying off Tommy. And then I've already talked about these turbos, but these are from ATP. They are their Garrett Gen 2 2860s. This Damn. has gotta, this has gotta go. Bam. Yohan's gonna make his own downpipe setup out of titanium. It's gonna sound sick. Getting this all fabbed up, but in the meantime, Plasma Man hit us with another beautiful intake manifold. Brand new OEM ITBs. And now that we have the intake manifold, we can get a better idea of what's gonna be going on. Today is a very, very cool piece for the build. It has a really, really, really nice look to it. The main important thing is getting the shroud on so Johan can see how much room he has to work with here. This right here, this is actually an HPI top of the line intercooler that I got for my R32. The intercooler could come down a little bit more. It sucks having to be so OCD about a car. Beautiful Plasma Man intake manifold. We aren't able to get a titanium flange that matches up to the plasma clamp. So they're gonna make us another one and we're on the fence about doing it raw versus polished because this thing's sick. Yeah. So what do we think? A lot better? Yeah. This is their RB25 design one and it actually has a water rail that goes underneath. This is like the most beautiful design ever and I'm super excited to put this one on. Honestly, I'm, I'm trying to get a job at Plasma Man. I weld this, then I weld this long runner. So it'll be three sections and then I'll join those at the end. We still have to do the intake piping. Gotta weld all this for the cold side. I'm excited, I'm excited to see what it looks like. We've got a couple tasks, weld engines out of the car, a bunch of like little obscure stuff. We'll do the nice fitting way here and then it simplifies everything. I won't use any of this stuff. Now we have to figure out the water line situation, how we're gonna run those for the turbos to simplify that. Wow, I got it trimmed down to clear the, the trigger wheel. Tommy stole mine, but wouldn't admit it, so I had to buy this one off him. I think, I think Tommy and, and Grant are sabotaging me. From direct clutch, and this right here is that their nine-inch so cool billet twin disc clutch. That's good to hold, I think it's about 1,100 foot-pounds of torque, 1,500 newton meters. from Terra Firma with all the OEM lines for this. And if you're not familiar with this, this is actually the clutch booster. So kind of like a brake booster, except for the clutch pedal. Kind of a neat little thing that these cars have. So we decided to delete all of the zinc lines up here, just kind of simplify it. We have an E85 safe injector. With most Nissans, instead of the way that it's supposed to run, when you run this harness through the hole and it kind of loops down here in the engine bay and would kind of tuck under the headlight and you'd see it come up, you can actually run it underneath and run the wires so it's kind of like a tucked look. It'll look a lot better and you'll be a lot less clutter in the engine bay.
kind of give me an idea of where things will go, the you know, glue piping. Radiator hose is about there. We send the radiator out to get a shroud made for the electric fans. I decided to go with the filter here. I installed the R35 coils. We got a couple of sensors on this side. So I'll put those in, run the wires. It does something! It does Man, RV26 starter sounds so cool. <laughs> oh, it has oil. There you go. There we go. We know we have spark. We know we have fuel. We know that the, the trigger system is working. Oh, we don't have a filler net. We forgot about that. It started today. I want to start it right now. We're gonna get the GTR running today. All right, so unfortunately we hit a dead end. There's some vacuum leaks. A friend of mine over at Up Garage USA recommended to check the dowel pin. We actually had the longer dowel pins on this side and the shorter ones on the other side when they need to be flopped. Should be able to put it back together and hear what this thing's actually idles like. Can't remember if we showed this before, but I got the ducting powder coated for the uh, oil cooler. So as of right now, we're waiting on one fitting to be able to finish the water lines for the turbos. But other than that, the coolant system's complete. A very exciting thing that the whole exhaust is on. So for the first time, we'll get to actually hear what this thing sounds like. It sounds so good. Dang, dude, this thing's got a low. School is this car gonna be brand new and who knows how hard some of these parts are gonna be fine. So everything in the rear end is gonna be either brand new or zinc coated. So I found a new spot. Going. Oh, right there. So we put a little bit on here. I guess there's usually a pace for it, just to make sure that um, everything's lined up. Put some silicone on this gasket, zinc hardware, and I think pretty much everything in the rear end is good to go. This? Yeah. Really the only thing left that I can think of that's major is just welding up the intake pipes. By the end of the week, we will see the R34 driving so we could break it in and ready to tune. This is a little late night interior mod. One of the things that I've been meaning to change you notice there's a little crack. So you press the buttons and it fell through. So I got a new one. That's all set now. So this thing looks pretty much brand new. Had a few little scratches in it on the side. Um, I'm trying to just make the interior as new as I can. Well, you can still buy this stuff from Nissan. A few gouges up here. So I got a new one, pretty much the same thing. And then I switched over the, the Mines Alcantara boot and armrest that I did uh, over to that one. Uh, handbrake, you can't really just like change this end piece. So I bought a whole new assembly. Um, I personally like that it doesn't have the red stitching. I prefer the black because this all has like silver stitching and stuff. If your torque wrench doesn't look like this, you're doing RV26 wrong. But you could have bought a 350Z for that price. I bet. <laughs> The distance per click. There's so little teeth. Marco's helping me bleed the brakes. Uh, they're already feeling pretty good. Freddy's in here calibrating everything, poking around with some of the VCAM settings, uh, shooting to get this thing broken in today.
drive down the road, breaking those rings. stuff up and then break these rings in on the street. successful first drive. Now, the exciting part of all this, I don't know what it is about this car. It sounds so cool. Yeah, it's just checking figment once again before I weld it and then if I had to make an adjustment, I could make it now. And then next week, he's gonna decide to go single turbo. So. <laughs> oh, no. Official first drive with the intakes. I'm excited. Another note, uh, we are planning to tune the GTR. I reached out to Scott, AKA Tuning Fork, who's been helping us with a lot of other little weird quirks with the car. He's tuned a bajillion GTRs. I am, to be truthfully honest, very nervous. <laughs> Twenty-eight thousand RPM. Say you spun into. What year was that? Jesus <laughs> right. Overall, uh, I think it was a great success and easily be able to surpass my power goals of the car.